Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at another writing uh, skill which is using connectives. I realise that I've spoken about connectives a lot in my videos um, but I didn't actually and I've never actually created a video on them so I just wanted to dedicate five or so minutes by looking at what connectives actually are. Um, connectives are sometimes also known as discourse markers. Um, because I teach um, AQA, I know that in the mark scheme for some of the English language questions, they mention discourse markers, particularly when you are doing a writing task, like a question five, or even a comparison task in paper two. So a connective and a discourse marker are the same. The reason why I've got a picture of a chain in a few of these slides today is because it visually shows you this idea of something connecting. Um, and what we're talking about here, of course, is paragraphs and sentences. So discourse markers slash connectives are really good at beginning sentences in a coherent and confident way. I use them a lot, for example, in my emails. And, and when I um, you know, write something, uh, I, I find that I use them quite a bit. Um, as I said, they're useful for not only non-fiction writing, like letters or speeches or articles or, or reviews, or whatever you're writing. They're also useful for emails. They're also useful for organising your ideas into an order. And you can also use them when you're writing stories or description or when you're analysing language and structure or viewpoints. There's a number of different uh, ways in which you can use these, these connectives, um, which is why they can be very important. So here we have a selection of seven different groups of connectives um, listed in the top there in the table. You've got cause and effect connectives, such as therefore, according, as a result, comparison connectives, contrasting connectives in the yellow there are quite useful, particularly for, for some of the comparison questions in paper two, when you are expressing the differences between things. Um, sometimes you, for example, when you're writing a piece of nonfiction, like a letter or an article or a speech, you want to be able to expand on something across multiple sentences. So that's why using words like furthermore and in addition and moreover would be effective. Sometimes in not just writing tasks, but also reading responses, you want to give examples. For example, there we go, I've just used one. Um, but, you know, when you're quoting uh, an evidence, uh, you know, you're saying the adjective, for example. So they're also good in specifying um, evidence from the extract. You want to conclude sometimes and, and just round up what you want to say in a nutshell. Uh, and also timing there in purple, uh, the order of your, uh, of your ideas. So firstly, secondly, thirdly, and others as well. So these um, connectives are also known as discourse markers. They can be a very sophisticated way of beginning some of your sentences, uh, particularly in formal writing uh, for, for example, a paper two question five task. So finally, uh, let's just show you 10 examples. Again, not rocket science, I don't think. You can see in bold, I've put where the connective is. Um, in just kind of 10 hypothetical uh, sentences that you might write one day. Um, not going to go through all of these, you can read them obviously, but let's look at number four. Year 10 students have 12 exams. In contrast, year 11 pupils have 18, so you're expressing a difference there. You're making a contrast, which is why I've used that one. Um, number six, you're specifying an example, what flavours of ice cream you actually have. Um, in number nine, you're kind of concluding by using the word overall. Um, and finally, um, in the top one, number one, we've got the, the connective similarly there, suggesting two people really enjoy their math lessons. So hopefully you can see that this is a case of just remembering some of these connectives. Uh, we wouldn't expect students to use them all. That would be ridiculous and people tend to have favourites. However, furthermore, on the other hand, tend to be favourites. Um, so you just need to remember maybe four or five of them in order to be prepared to use them in um, numerous different tasks that you'll get across 
your English language exams. Okay, so hopefully that's useful and has explained what I mean by connectives um, or discourse markers. Thank you.